Hello everyone, my name is Bushra and today's session is about putting differentiation to work in ELT. As we all know that ESL learners grow and learn in predictable ways, they are all still unique learners with very different needs. This session will be about how students differ in readiness and how teachers can offer differentiated experience based on students' readiness. Once teachers can identify students' level, they can plan differentiated lesson and assessment based on the student's language profile. So in today's objective is that teachers will be able to differentiate instructions in their classroom in a very effective manner. Before I continue to tell the schedule of today's session and the steps that we will look into, I would like to share that a lot of researchers have suggested that teachers can plan for learning experiences that are challenging and achievable when considering students' current skills. So we need to keep this in mind throughout the whole session that if we are updated by the students' current skills, that would help us to increase the gap between the achievements that students have and it can help us to bridge to create this bridge where students can connect to their weaknesses and learn from there as teachers begin to differentiate instructions there are three main instructional elements that can be adjusted to meet the needs of their learners and that's what we will be covering in today's session so we will look into what exactly is differentiating instruction there are a lot of teachers who are not aware of differentiating instruction so i will be talking about it in a brief summary how they can learn a little bit history about it and then Bloom's taxonomy because we are going to look at it and create our activities based on Bloom's taxonomy. Then we are going to learn the three elements of differentiating instructions through which are content, process and product and we are going to look at one of the activities of Think Tac Toe as an example. So let's first look at what is differentiating instruction. It might be hard to define what exactly it means, but I would say it in brief as in scaffolding and individualized instruction. When I say scaffolding, I mean giving students assistance to accomplish the task in their classroom of what they are doing. Everyone does the same thing, but some of the students who are lower achiever, they can have some extra work, some extra handouts, and where they can do some pre-assessment before they start the task. And for higher achiever students, they can have a little bit of more challenging tasks and a little bit more of work to do, which is according to their level of readiness. So the end of the achievement goal would still be the same. Individualized instruction, when I say this, I mean that you individualize the instructions where all the students have the same goal, but each student goes through the material at different speed and in a different way. Everyone gets to the same pace, just not at the same time. So the lower student level students might just take a little bit time to reach to the goal, whereas the higher level students may achieve the goals quicker, but it can be more challenging for them in order to achieve that goal. So we are going to look at the uh, differentiated instruction in ELT through three elements, content, process and product. We are going to look into it in depth, but right now I'm just going to briefly talk about each one of them. So if we first look at what is differentiated instruction, differentiation for ESL student is unique in that you give different materials to your students. So that means a lot of preparation is required from the teachers. The materials or process have been modified by the teacher and for the language learners especially that you're giving 
and some tasks that are higher level for the students are also a bit more of work that you need to go and uh, do it. So it's a lot of work for the teachers to work into it, but that's how you will achieve the goals of your students at the end of the class. So if you look at the content, so when we differentiate to content, it means that we differentiate according to what students need to learn. When we differentiate according to process, we differentiate materials of how they learn the information you are presenting. When we differentiate through product, we are differentiating it how they demonstrate that they have acquired the knowledge that you are providing it to them. Points to consider when you are differentiating the instructions are that all the activities should have the same aims and it should be given with the same, same time frame and the motivation level is very important which should be the same because if you're going to give lower achiever students a little easier task then just be sure that they're still motivated. And even for higher level students, don't give them an extreme challenging task that they might get um, frustrated or annoyed by the task. So it should still keep their motivational level high. When we look at differentiation through content, now we are going to look into a little more, more in depth about differentiation of content. It does not mean that you are teaching different content. It just means that teaching the content differently by adjusting the level of depth, complexity, and readability of the materials. So I'm going to share some of the strategies that I apply when I am differentiating the instructions through the content. So when you differentiate content, you change the requirement of what students need to learn. The goal of your students are going to be slightly different for each one of them because there are going to be a lot of steps required for them. Use pre-assessments to first de determine where the student needs to begin from. Match the students with appropriate activities. You can use KNW chart where student you will get to know what uh, students already know, what they need to know, and what they want to know. When you are differentiating your content, another way of doing is that if you have weaker students or lower achiever students, you can change the vocabulary for your students. For example, you have like a, a classic novel that you're introducing in the classroom. So for lower achiever students, you can maybe give them some list of vocabulary with the definition, or you could provide higher level of students um, some questions where they have to uh, understand the vocabulary to content clue. So these types of activities can be for different various levels. Teach them the necessary vocabulary beforehand. That would be also a great way of differentiating the instruction. Give them additional materials before they tackle the main reading, such as you can give them word walls, um, pictionary, or a word sort, or semantic mapping, maybe a diagram. So they can, um, you can teach them the vocabulary before they start the reading process. And then you would present the information in a different way as well. For example, you might give students the information in a graphic form, in a block of text. You might use different diagrams, timeline, flowcharts, or give the data to your students in um, any different method which would allow you to differentiate the instructions for content. Give your uh, students different homework assignment. That is ideal as well because then you can let them have their own pace of working. This may involve decreasing the quality of your homework or the way in which they complete the assignment, but you might ask the rest of the class, for example, to write a summary and read while they for something that they have read while the other students they just have to fill in the gap for some reading that they have done and not write the summary but 
first get uh, to the first step in order to achieve the goal, which is writing summary. So you can give them maybe uh, lower achiever students some more tasks where the higher achiever students have to just write the summary and then maybe they can write their own thoughts about it where the lower level students have to first fill in the gaps and complete the sentences, rearrange the sentences and then go towards writing a summary. So here we have differentiating content through Bloom's taxonomy. Now, if you look here, then lower achiever students, they will, because they will be unfamiliar with the concept, completing tasks at lower level students, such as knowledge, comprehension, and application will be applied. Um, then you have partial mastery students where you focus on application, analysis, and evaluation. Then you have higher level of um, mastery emphasizes on evaluation and synthesis. So when you're differentiating content, you need to be sure that there are two things that are involved, providing students with choices in order to add depth to learning. So give them two options where they have to pick one to do and they would feel like they were the ones who picked it. So they will definitely work hard towards it. Then you provide students with additional resources that match their levels of understanding. You can give them as a handout, you can let them um, have it as a homework assignment or just to adjust the content differently by adjusting the level of um, depth, complexity, and readability of the students through materials. So that was about the content. Now we're going to look about the process of differentiation and how we differentiate through process. When you differentiate based on the process by which students learn information, you change the way they are learning because process is all about how the students learn. They learn the same information, but in a different manner. So the process is going to be different, even though the information is the same. So you give the students the information in manageable, maybe chunks, rather than a large whole information at once. So maybe for um, lower achiever students, you can give students one section of um, the reading passage at a time, whereas for higher achiever students, you can give them a little more of the material where they have to write a summary and um, lower achiever students just have to work on chunks first, maybe fill in the gaps or brainstorm some of the vocabulary so you can differentiate according to how they learn. Consider uh, letting groups work together so you can have breakout sessions if you are providing online classes and then you can easily differentiate your instructions based on the um, process by having different level of students in different levels of breakout sessions. Another strategy that you could apply is you could use concrete items to teach rather than giving them a diagram which uh, give them a, a tangible example with some simple experiment. They can find lots of ways to make teaching more hands-on with a little thought. So if you just um, provide them with a little more experience of hands-on, maybe they have to watch a video of a silent video and they have to brainstorm these types of experimental lessons that students really enjoy. And you can keep in mind with different learning styles while you're doing these experimental levels of work because discovering their learning styles in order to differentiate for your ESL students in the process of learning, you must know their learning styles this way you can teach to their specific learning styles preferences. So if you know they learn best through, through uh, visual learners, maybe you want to apply more videos in your classroom for that group. If you know that they are read and write learners, you might give them more writing tasks. If you know that they are more of hands-on activity, kinesthetic learners, so you might apply more of hands-on activities for them. So based on their learning styles, you would differentiate the process of their activities. Build on your students' previous knowledge. This is also very important. The more you can help students remember what they already know about the subject, the easiest it will be 
by retaining their new information you present. Consider having your students complete the KWL chart or do think pair share activity. Both of these will bring any knowledge your ESL students already process to the forefront of their minds so they, they are ready to take on new information easily. After this, we are going to look at product differentiation. When you differentiate the product, you modify how your students demonstrate what they have acquired knowledge or the means of assessment. For ESL students, they may know the knowledge or the information, but they might be unable to express it and this express it. And this is really a struggle that we teachers are facing right now with our online classes. Some of the students would like to give out the information that they have or share what they know, but they are facing some trouble by expressing because of the language barriers. To help them show how they know or whatever they know or try trying by different approaches would actually help you to assess their knowledge and there are many strategies that you can apply for example use nonverbal means of assessment for you can tell them to draw or maybe uh, build a diagram a poster so these are the ways also that you could um, assess their knowledge and um, you can allow them to work in groups and consider letting them put together a collage of something, create a piece of art, um, they can perform a um, performance, a drama, you can apply drama in the classroom. Students absolutely love it and um, they can illustrate their mastery of the information in a very creative manner. Though these may seem like more extensive or difficult means of assessment, but your students might jump at the chance to show you what they know without having to use words, which uh, they might be weak at because of the language barriers. If you decide to have your students take the same assessment as the, as the rest of the class, you can still differentiate the product by modifying your testing procedures. Give your students some more time to complete their tasks. I, I do know that on one of the third slides, I told you that all the tasks should be assigned at the uh, same time, but there might be some students who are a little bit slow. You can give them some extra time while you can tell the other students that go over their work once again. So you can be fair and we are always learning about the students all the time. So you can give some more time, maybe some of the students who are practicing some uh, speaking skills, they might require some more time to speak. So let them have some extra time as well. And asking the same question, but not allowing them to tell you their answers rather than writing them down can be also another strategy of testing their speaking skills. Letting your ESL students have additional ta tools to take tests. Um, you might allow your students to use books or notes as um, they are taking some of the assignments, uh, open book assignments. They could certainly allow them to use a dictionary. Maybe you, that would be a nice uh, strategy as well. You might just rewrite your test using similar words and grammars in the questions but allow them to first start from the beginning uh, from an easier step towards more of challenging steps. Strategies of differentiate instructions using Bloom taxonomy is that I would like to review here that no matter which differentiated instruction element you pick for your class, you have to still follow the Bloom's taxonomy in order to have it in a more organized manner. And this is where you can also see which step is your student at. And then you can help her to achieve the higher level of um, achieve, uh, readiness in the classroom. 
So these are the levels of the students where you can design all the tasks. One of the best tasks that I love is tic-tac-toe. Um, think tic-tac-toe is a strategy that allows students to choose how they will show what they are learning by giving them a variety of activities to choose from. Students are given a three by three grid, just like tic-tac-toe with the exception that each spot is filled with an activity. So I'm going to show you an activity here as an example. This is a party theme. It's a think a tactile. They have to design a menu for a party. So if you can look at each box, there are different activities there for the students all related to the party theme. But they are following all of these Bloom's taxonomy strategies here according to the level of readiness. So remember where they're actually just writing the list and then understand where they are explaining the ideas and concepts and they apply, they use the information in, in a new situation, analyze, they draw con connections um, among ideas and evaluate, justify a stand or decision and create where they produce new or original work. So here is also all of those that are applied in each box. Here, they, do, for example, list the food theme you want to buy. So this would be basically, if you look at the Bloom's taxonomy, it would be remember they have to list, so they have to remember this is basically listing. So this is how we create the rest of it as well. And here. We have these boxes. You can be sure that you're using all of the Bloom's taxonomy varied stages in order to complete your think tac toe. This is an ideal activity which I usually do at the end of the week and my students absolutely love it. They have a free choice to choose. Sometimes I do fill in the center box, but sometimes I leave it up to the students to see how what level of creativity they have. Some of the students chose to do a poster. Some of them created a video. Some of them did various different works. But if you look at all the activities, no matter which three they choose in order to create the three grid, they were applying various level of Bloom's taxonomy stages. So they were maybe, let's say, write about how you feel about the party afterwards. So every student had to somehow, whoever picks this horizontally or vertically, had to pick one of these and which are more challenging. So they have to be designed in a diff in a great way as well. So it's very important that you look at the Bloom's taxonomy in order to create the questions as well. So this is the tic-tac-toe planning. In brief, you describe, decide how to categorize the activities utilizing the following philosophies. Number one, you can choose multiple intelligence. Um, you can apply the Bloom's taxonomy. I absolutely love using Bloom's taxonomy throughout my differentiated instruction process. And it absolutely does marvelous job. Level of readiness can be also applied, but and learning styles. So I usually blend in level of learning, level of readiness and learning styles together when I am applying it in my classroom. Place each post on the grid so that no matter which way students choose, they will be doing a variety of activities to support the understanding. That is very important. Create an assessment rubric with the criteria corresponding to the number of each activity. Otherwise, there will be no meaning towards doing this think tac toe activity. ESL differentiation that works is that no matter how you differentiate for your ESL students, you should keep some things in mind to make sure that differentiation is working for everyone. Some of the things are expectations. Keep your expectations high for all of your students, whether you modify the content or the process or you pick the product. For your ESL students, expect them to put forth the same effort as everyone in class. Don't expect less from full efforts from your students even if they're doing things a little bit different from the other members of your class. Continually assess and observe your student. This is one of the most important 
criteria of differentiated instruction. Because sometimes your lower achiever students start doing really well in class that they are moved towards the higher level achieving students. It may say, take some trials and you may come across some errors until you figure out exactly what works best for your students in your class. So just keep practicing. It's like an experiment the teachers have to go through. Don't be afraid to do a little guesswork when it comes to the right type of differentiation for your ESL students. But make sure you are continually observing and assessing your students of how well they are doing with the differentiation methods that you are working with. The only way you'll arrive at the best method for your student is to know what's working and what is not working for them through observation. So you always have to observe your students. Even if you're having breakout sessions, you have to continuously go on into each session and see how the students are doing. Working with another, other teachers in your organization and telling them to um, work together or letting them know what your goals are would also help you to conquer them in a effective manner where they would support you and maybe some of them are already applying differentiated instruction in the classroom so you could ask them which one works much better which one needs more amendments so accordingly you can plan your differentiated instructions in your classroom as well and remember that the ultimate goal is to help your students learn. So sometimes that means that going about the task a little differently, differentiating the content, process, or product to help your students reach out the goals that you have set for them and keep it until you find out what works best for you and your students. So you don't be afraid of trying something new in during this process. I hope this workshop was, this session was effective and you all have learned something from today's session. If you need any handouts, you could email me and I could send them to you. Or if you need any more materials regarding differentiated instruction, do let me know. And thank you so much for attending this session. Thank you.